In nuclear physics, beta decay, beta decay is a type of radioactive decay in which a beta ray, fast energetic electron or positron, and a neutrino are emitted from an atomic nucleus. For example, beta decay of a neutron transforms it into a proton by the emission of an electron, or conversely a proton is converted into a neutron by the emission of a positron, positron emission, thus changing the nuclide type. Neither the beta particle nor its associated neutrino exist within the nucleus prior to beta decay, but are created in the decay process. By this process, unstable atoms obtain a more stable ratio of protons to neutrons. The probability of a nuclide decaying due to beta and other forms of decay is determined by its nuclear binding energy. The binding energies of all existing nuclides form what is called the nuclear band or valley of stability. For either electron or positron emission to be energetically possible, the energy release see below, or Q value must be positive. Beta decay is a consequence of the weak force, which is characterized by relatively lengthy decay times. Nucleons are composed of up quarks and down quarks, and the weak force allows a quark to change type by the exchange of a W boson and the creation of an electron, antineutrino or positron, neutrino pair. For example, a neutron, composed of two down quarks and an up quark, decays to a proton composed of a down quark and two up quarks. Decay times for many nuclides that are subject to beta decay can be thousands of years. Electron capture is sometimes included as a type of beta decay, because the basic nuclear process, mediated by the weak force, is the same. In electron capture, an inner atomic electron is captured by a proton in the nucleus, transforming it into a neutron, and an electron neutrino is released. Description The two types of beta decay are known as beta minus and beta plus. In beta minus, beta minus decay, a neutron is converted to a proton, and the process creates an electron and an electron antineutrino, while in beta plus beta plus decay, a proton is converted to a neutron and the process creates a positron and an electron neutrino. Beta plus decay is also known as positron emission. Beta decay conserves a quantum number known as the lepton number, or the number of electrons and their associated neutrinos. Other leptons are the muon and tau particles. These particles have lepton number plus 1, while their antiparticles have lepton number minus 1. Since a proton or neutron has lepton number 0, beta plus decay, a positron, or antielectron, must be accompanied with an electron neutrino, while beta minus decay, an electron, must be accompanied by an electron antineutrino. An example of electron emission, beta minus decay, is the decay of carbon-14 into nitrogen-14 with a half-life of about 5,730 years. 146C147N plus E minus plus nu ein This form of decay, the original element becomes a new chemical element in a process known as nuclear transmutation. This new element has an unchanged mass number A, but an atomic number Z that is increased by 1. As in all nuclear decays, the decaying element, in this case 146C, is known as the parent nuclide while the resulting element, in this case 147N, is known as the daughter nuclide. An example of positron emission, beta plus decay, is the decay of magnesium-23 into sodium-23 with a half-life of about 11.3 s. 2312 megagrams 2311 na plus e plus plus nu e beta plus decay also results in nuclear transmutation with the resulting element having an atomic number that is decreased by 1 the beta spectrum or distribution of energy values for the beta particles is continuous the total energy of the decay process is divided between the electron the antineutrino and the recoiling nuclide in the figure to the right, an example of an electron with 0.40 MeV energy from the beta decay of 210 Bi is shown. In this example, the total decay energy is 1.16 MeV, so the antineutrino has the remaining energy, 1.16 to 0.40 equals 0.76 MeV. An electron at the far right of the curve would have the maximum possible kinetic energy, leaving the energy of the neutrino to be only its small rest mass. History Discovery and initial characterization 
Radioactivity was discovered in 1896 by Henri Becquerel in uranium, and subsequently observed by Marie and Pierre Curie in thorium and in the new elements polonium and radium. In 1899, Ernest Rutherford separated radioactive emissions into two types, alpha and beta, now beta minus, based on penetration of objects and ability to cause ionization. Alpha rays could be stopped by thin sheets of paper or aluminium, whereas beta rays could penetrate several millimeters of aluminium. In 1900, Paul Villard identified a still more penetrating type of radiation, which Rutherford identified as a fundamentally new type in 1903 and termed gamma rays. Alpha, beta, and gamma are the first three letters of the Greek alphabet. In 1900, Becquerel measured the mass to charge ratio M -E, for beta particles by the method of J.J. Thomson used to study cathode rays and identify the electron. He found that M E for a beta particle is the same as for Thomson's electron, and therefore suggested that the beta particle is in fact an electron. In 1901, Rutherford and Frederick Soddy showed that alpha and beta radioactivity involves the transmutation of atoms into atoms of other chemical elements. In 1913, after the products of more radioactive decays were known, Saudi and Casimir's phagins independently proposed their radioactive displacement law, which states that beta, i.e., beta minus emission from one element produces another element one place to the right in the periodic table, while alpha emission produces an element two places to the left. Neutrinos the study of beta decay provided the first physical evidence for the existence of the neutrino. In both alpha and gamma decay, the resulting particle has a narrow energy distribution, since the particle carries the energy from the difference between the initial and final nuclear states. However, the kinetic energy distribution, or spectrum, of beta particles measured by Lise Meitner and Otto Hahn in 1911 and by Jean Danish in 1913 showed multiple lines on a diffuse background. These measurements offered the first hint that beta particles have a continuous spectrum. In 1914, James Chadwick used a magnetic spectrometer with one of Hans Geiger's new counters to make more accurate measurements which showed that the spectrum was continuous. The distribution of beta particle energies was in apparent contradiction to the law of conservation of energy. If beta decay were simply electron emission as assumed at the time, then the energy of the emitted electron should have a particular, well-defined value. For beta decay, however, the observed broad distribution of energies suggested that energy is lost in the beta decay process. This spectrum was puzzling for many years. A second problem is related to the conservation of angular momentum. Molecular band spectra showed that the nuclear spin of nitrogen-14 is 1 i.e. equal to the reduced Planck constant, and more generally that the spin is integral for nuclei of even mass number and half integral for nuclei of odd mass number. This was later explained by the proton-neutron model of the nucleus. Beta decay leaves the mass number unchanged, so the change of nuclear spin must be an integer. However, the electron spin is one-half, hence angular momentum would not be conserved if beta decay were simply electron emission. From 1920 to 1927, Charles Drummond Ellis along with Chadwick and colleagues further established that the beta decay spectrum is continuous. In 1933, Ellis and Neville Mott obtained strong evidence that the beta spectrum has an effective upper bound in energy. Niels Bohr had suggested that the beta spectrum could be explained if conservation of energy was true only in a statistical sense, thus this principle might be violated in any given decay. However, the upper bound in beta energies determined by Ellis and Mott ruled out that notion. Now, the problem of how to account for the variability of energy in known beta decay products, as well as for conservation of momentum and angular momentum in the process, became acute. In a famous letter written in 1930, Wolfgang Pauli attempted to resolve the beta particle energy conundrum by suggesting that, in addition to electrons and protons, atomic nuclei also contained an extremely light neutral particle, which he called the neutron. He suggested that this neutron was also emitted during beta decay thus accounting for the known missing energy momentum and angular momentum but it had simply not yet been observed in 1931 enrico fermi renamed pauli s neutron the neutrino roughly little neutral one in italian 
In 1934, Fermi published his landmark theory for beta decay, where he applied the principles of quantum mechanics to matter particles, supposing that they can be created and annihilated, just as the light quanta in atomic transitions. Thus, according to Fermi, neutrinos are created in the beta decay process, rather than contained in the nucleus, the same happens to electrons. The neutrino interaction with matter was so weak that detecting it proved a severe experimental challenge. Further indirect evidence of the existence of the neutrino was obtained by observing the recoil of nuclei that emitted such a particle after absorbing an electron. Neutrinos were finally detected directly in 1956 by Clyde Cowan and Frederick Rhinus in the cowan rhinus neutrino experiment. The properties of neutrinos were, with a few minor modifications, as predicted by Pauli and Fermi. Beta plus decay and electron capture in 1934, Frederick and Irene Joliot Curie bombarded aluminium with alpha particles to affect the nuclear reaction 42 He plus 2713 Al3015P plus 10N, and observed that the product isotope 3015P emits a positron identical to those found in cosmic rays discovered by Carl David Anderson in 1932. This was the first example of beta plus decay, positron emission, which they termed artificial radioactivity since 3015 P is a short-lived nuclide which does not exist in nature. In recognition of their discovery the couple were awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1935. The theory of electron capture was first discussed by Giancarlo Wick in a 1934 paper, and then developed by Hideki Yukawa and others. K-electron capture was first observed in 1937 by Luis Alvarez, in the nuclide 48 volts. Alvarez went on to study electron capture in 67 Ga and other nuclides. Non-conservation of parity in 1956, Sung Dao Li and Chen Ning Yang noticed that there was no evidence that parity was conserved in weak interactions, and so they postulated that this symmetry may not be preserved by the weak force. They sketched the design for an experiment for testing conservation of parity in the laboratory. Later that year, Qi and Xiang Wu and co-workers conducted the Wu experiment showing an asymmetrical beta decay of cobalt-60 at cold temperatures that proved that parity is not conserved in beta decay. This surprising result overturned long-held assumptions about parity and the weak force. In recognition of their theoretical work, Li and Yang were awarded the Nobel Prize for Physics in 1957. Beta minus decay In beta minus decay, the weak interaction converts an atomic nucleus into a nucleus with atomic number increased by 1, while emitting an electron e and an electron antineutrino nu e. Beta minus decay generally occurs in neutron-rich nuclei. The generic equation is Azx as plus 1x plus e minus plus nu e where a and z are the mass number and atomic number of the decaying nucleus, and x and x are the initial and final elements, respectively. Another example is when the free neutron 10N decays by beta minus decay into a proton P N P plus E minus plus nu E. At the fundamental level, as depicted in the Feynman diagram on the right, this is caused by the conversion of the negatively charged minus one third E down quark to the positively charged plus two thirds E up quark by emission of a W minus boson. The W minus boson subsequently decays into an electron and an electron antineutrino. D U plus E minus plus nu E. Beta plus decay. In beta plus decay, or positron emission, the weak interaction converts an atomic nucleus into a nucleus with atomic number decreased by 1, while emitting a positron e plus, and an electron neutrino nu e. Beta plus decay generally occurs in proton-rich nuclei. The generic equation is Azx as minus 1x plus e plus plus nu ethis may be considered as the decay of a proton inside the nucleus to a neutron pn plus e plus plus nu e however, beta plus decay cannot occur in an isolated proton because it requires energy due to the mass of the neutron being greater than the mass of the proton. 
Beta plus decay can only happen inside nuclei when the daughter nucleus has a greater binding energy, and therefore a lower total energy, than the mother nucleus. The difference between these energies goes into the reaction of converting a proton into a neutron, a positron and a neutrino and into the kinetic energy of these particles. This process is opposite to negative beta decay, in that the weak interaction converts a proton into a neutron by converting an up quark into a down quark resulting in the emission of AW plus or the absorption of AW minus. Electron capture, K capture In all cases where beta plus decay positron emission of a nucleus is allowed energetically, so too is electron capture allowed. This is a process during which a nucleus captures one of its atomic electrons, resulting in the emission of a neutrino AZX plus E minus AS minus 1X plus nu E. An example of electron capture is one of the decay modes of krypton 81 into bromine 81. 8136 Kr plus E minus 8135 bridge plus nu EALL emitted neutrinos are of the same energy. In proton-rich nuclei where the energy difference between the initial and final states is less than 2 mech2, beta plus decay is not energetically possible, and electron capture is the sole decay mode. If the captured electron comes from the innermost shell of the atom, the K shell, which has the highest probability to interact with the nucleus, the process is called K capture. If it comes from the L shell, the process is called L capture, etc. Electron capture is a competing, simultaneous decay process for all nuclei that can undergo beta plus decay. The converse, however, is not true. Electron capture is the only type of decay that is allowed in proton-rich nuclides that do not have sufficient energy to emit a positron and neutrino. Nuclear transmutation if the proton and neutron are part of an atomic nucleus, the above-described decay processes transmute one chemical element into another. For example, beta decay does not change the number of, of nucleons in the nucleus, but changes only its charge Z. Thus the set of all nuclides with the same A can be introduced, these isobaric nuclides may turn into each other via beta decay. For a given A there is one that is most stable. It is said to be beta stable, because it presents a local minima of the mass excess. If such a nucleus has A, Z numbers, the neighbor nuclei A, Z minus 1, and A, Z plus 1 have higher mass excess and can beta decay into A, Z, but not vice versa. For all odd mass numbers A, there is only one known beta stable isobar. For even A, there are up to three different beta stable isobars experimentally known, for example, 9640 ZR, 9642 Mo, and 9644 Ru are all beta stable. There are about 355 known beta decay stable nuclides. Competition of beta decay types Usually unstable nuclides are clearly either neutron rich or proton rich with the former undergoing beta decay and the latter undergoing electron capture or more rarely due to the higher energy requirements positron decay however in a few cases of odd proton odd neutron radionuclides it may be energetically favorable for the radionuclide to decay to an even proton even neutron isobar either by undergoing beta positive or beta negative decay an often cited example is the single isotope 6,429 Cu 29 protons, 35 neutrons, which illustrates three types of beta decay in competition. Copper 64 has a half-life of about 12.7 hours. This isotope has one unpaired proton and one unpaired neutron, so either the proton or the neutron can decay. This particular nuclide, though not all nuclides in this situation, is almost equally likely to decay through proton decay by positron emission 18% or electron capture 43% to 6428 Ni, as it is through neutron decay by electron emission 39% to 6430 Zn. Stability of naturally occurring nuclides most naturally occurring nuclides on Earth are beta-stable. Those that are not have half-lives ranging from under a second to periods of time significantly greater than the age of the universe. 
One common example of a long-lived isotope is the odd proton odd neutron nuclide 4019K, which undergoes all three types of beta decay, beta minus, beta plus and electron capture, with a half-life of 1.277 times 109 years. Conservation rules for beta decay Baryon number is conserved B equals N Q minus N Q three Display style B equals FRAC N underscore Q N underscore bar Q three where N Q display style n underscore Q is the number of constituent quarks and n Q display style n underscore overline Q is the number of constituent antiquarks. Beta decay just changes neutron to proton or, in the case of positive beta decay, electron capture proton to neutron so the number of individual quarks doesn't change. It is only the baryon flavor that changes, here labeled as the isospin. Up and down quarks have total isospin I equals 1 2 display style I equals frac 1 2 and isospin projections I z equals 1 2 up quark minus 1 2 down quark display style I underscore text z equals begin cases frac 1 2 and text up quark frac 1 2 and text down quark end cases all other quarks have I equals 0. In general I Z equals one two N U minus N D Display style I underscore text Z equals FRAC one two N underscore text U N underscore text D. Lepton number is conserved. L N minus N Display style L equiv N underscore L N underscore bar L so all leptons have assigned a value of plus 1, antileptons minus 1, and non-leptonic particles 0. NP plus E minus plus nu EL, 0 equals 0 plus 1 minus 1, display style, begin, matrix, and text N, and right arrow and text P, and plus and text E, caret, and plus and bar, nu, underscore, text E, L, and 0 and equals and 0 and plus and 1 and and 1, end, matrix, angular momentum for allowed decays, the net orbital angular momentum is 0, hence only spin quantum numbers are considered. The electron and antineutrino are fermions, spin minus one half objects, therefore they may couple to total S equals one, display style S equals one parallel, or S equals zero, display style S equals zero, anti-parallel. For forbidden decays, orbital angular momentum must also be taken into consideration. Energy release the Q value is defined as the total energy released in a given nuclear decay. In beta decay, Q is therefore also the sum of the kinetic energies of the emitted beta particle, neutrino, and recoiling nucleus. Because of the large mass of the nucleus compared to that of the beta particle and neutrino, the kinetic energy of the recoiling nucleus can generally be neglected. Beta particles can therefore be emitted with any kinetic energy ranging from 0 to Q. A typical Q is around 1 MeV, but can range from a few keV to a few tens of MeV. Since the rest mass of the electron is 511 keV, the most energetic beta particles are ultra-relativistic, with speeds very close to the speed of light. Beta minus decay Consider the generic equation for beta decay Azx as plus 1x plus e minus plus nu e. The Q value for this decay is 
Q equals M N X Z A minus M N X Z plus one of minus M E minus M new E C two Display style Q equals left M underscore N left C E carrot method of underscore method Z X right M underscore N left C E carrot method of underscore method Z plus one X right M underscore E M underscore overline new underscore E right C carrot two where M N X Z a display style M underscore N left C E carrot method of underscore method Z X right is the mass of the nucleus of the AZX atom M E display style M underscore E is the mass of the electron and M new E display style M underscore overline new underscore E is the mass of the electron antineutrino. In other words, the total energy released is the mass energy of the initial nucleus, minus the mass energy of the final nucleus, electron, and antineutrino. The mass of the nucleus Minnesota is related to the standard atomic mass M by M X Z A C 2 equals M N X Z A C two plus Z M E C two minus I equals one Z B I display style M left C E carrot method of underscore method Z X right C carrot two equals M underscore N left C E carrot method of underscore method Z X right C carrot two plus Z M underscore E C carrot two sum underscore I equals one carrot Z B underscore I that is, the total atomic mass is the mass of the nucleus, plus the mass of the electrons, minus the sum of all electron binding energies by for the atom. This equation is rearranged to find M N X Z A Display style M underscore N left C E carrot method of underscore method Z X right and M N X Z plus one Display style M underscore N left C E carrot method of underscore method Z plus one X right is found similarly. 
substituting these nuclear masses into the Q-value equation, while neglecting the nearly zero antineutrino mass and the difference in electron binding energies, which is very small for high Z atoms, we have Q equals M X Z A minus M X Z plus one A C two Display style Q equals left M left C E carrot method of underscore method Z X right M left C E carrot method of underscore method Z plus one X right right C carrot two. This energy is carried away as kinetic energy by the electron and neutrino. Because the reaction will proceed only when the Q value is positive, beta minus decay can occur when the mass of atom AZX is greater than the mass of atom AS plus 1X. Beta plus decay The equations for beta plus decay are similar, with the generic equation AZX AS minus 1X plus E plus plus new E giving Q equals M N X Z A minus M N X Z minus one of minus M E minus M new E C two Display style Q equals left M underscore N left C E carrot method a underscore method Z X right M underscore N left C E carrot method a underscore method Z minus one X right M underscore E M underscore new underscore E right C carrot two. However, in this equation, the electron masses do not cancel, and we are left with Q equals M X Z A minus M X Z minus 1 of minus 2 M E C 2 Display style Q equals left M left C E carrot method a underscore method Z X right M left C E carrot method a underscore method Z minus one X right minus two meters underscore E right C carrot two because the reaction will proceed only when the Q value is positive, beta plus decay can occur when the mass of atom AZX exceeds that of AZ1X by at least twice the mass of the electron. Electron capture The analogous calculation for electron capture must take into account the binding energy of the electrons. This is because the atom will be left in an excited state after capturing the electron, and the binding energy of the captured innermost electron is significant. Using the generic equation for electron capture, AZX plus E minus AS minus 1X plus nu U have Q equals M N X 
Z A plus M E minus M N X Z minus one of minus M new E C two Display style Q equals left M underscore N left C E carrot method of underscore method Z X right plus M underscore E M underscore N left C E carrot method of underscore method Z minus one X right M underscore new underscore E right C carrot two which simplifies to Q equals M X Z A minus M X Z minus one A C two minus B N Display style Q equals left M left C E carrot method of underscore method Z X right M left C E carrot method of underscore method Z minus one X right right C carrot two B underscore N where B N is the binding energy of the captured electron. Because the binding energy of the electron is much less than the mass of the electron, nuclei that can undergo beta plus decay can always also undergo electron capture, but the reverse is not true. Beta emission spectrum Beta decay can be considered as a perturbation as described in quantum mechanics, and thus Fermi's golden rule can be applied. This leads to an expression for the kinetic energy spectrum n t of emitted betas as follows n t equals c l t f z t p E Q minus T two Display style N T equals C underscore L T F Z T pay Q T carrot two where T is the kinetic energy, Cl is a shape function that depends on the forbiddenness of the decay, it is constant for allowed decays, F, Z, T, is the Fermi function, C below, with Z the charge of the final state nucleus, E equals T plus mc2 is the total energy, P equals square root, E, C, 2 minus, mc2 is the momentum, and Q is the Q value of the decay. The kinetic energy of the emitted neutrino is given approximately by Q minus the kinetic energy of the beta. As an example, the beta decay spectrum of 210 by, originally called ray, is shown to the right. Fermi function The Fermi function that appears in the beta spectrum formula accounts for the Coulomb attraction, repulsion between the emitted beta and the final state nucleus. Approximating the associated wave functions to be spherically symmetric, the Fermi function can be analytically calculated to be F Z T equals two one plus S gamma one plus two 
S two two P row two S minus two E Pi Ada Gamma S plus I aided two Display style F Z T equals FRAC two one plus S gamma one plus two S carrot two two P row carrot two S two E carrot pi eta gamma S plus I eta carrot two where s equals square root 1 minus alpha 2 z 2 alpha is the fine structure constant, eta equals plus or minus alpha z per percent, plus for electrons, minus for positrons, rho equals rn, rn is the radius of the final state nucleus, and gamma is the gamma function. For non-relativistic betas, q mech 2, this expression can be approximated by f z T approximately equals two Pi Ada one minus E minus two Pi Ada Display style f z t approximately frac two pi eta one e caret minus two pi eta. Other approximations can be found in the literature. Curie plot. A Curie plot, also known as a Fermi Curie plot, is a graph used in studying beta decay developed by Franz N. D. Curie, in which the square root of the number of beta particles whose momenta or energy lie within a certain narrow range, divided by the Fermi function, is plotted against beta particle energy. It is a straight line for allowed transitions and some forbidden transitions, in accord with the Fermi beta decay theory. The energy axis x axis intercept of a Curie plot corresponds to the maximum energy imparted to the electron positron the decay's q value with a Curie plot one can find the limit on the effective mass of a neutrino helicity polarization of neutrinos electrons and positrons emitted in beta decay After the discovery of parity non-conservation, see history, it was found that, in beta decay, electrons are emitted mostly with negative helicity, i.e., they move, naively speaking, like left-handed screws driven into a material, they have negative longitudinal polarization. Conversely, positrons have mostly positive helicity, i.e., they move like right-handed screws. Neutrinos emitted in positron decay have positive helicity, while antineutrinos emitted in electron decay have negative helicity. The higher the energy of the particles, the higher their polarization. Types of beta decay transitions Beta decays can be classified according to the angular momentum L value, and total spin S value, of the emitted radiation. Since total angular momentum must be conserved, including orbital and spin angular momentum, beta decay occurs by a variety of quantum state transitions to various nuclear angular momentum or spin states, known as Fermi or Gamma Teller transitions. When beta decay particles carry no angular momentum L equals zero, the decay is referred to as allowed, otherwise it is forbidden. Other decay modes, which are rare, are known as bound state decay and double beta decay. Fermi transitions A Fermi transition is a beta decay in which the spins of the emitted electron positron, and antineutrino neutrino, couple to total spin S equals 0 Display style s equals zero, leading to an angular momentum change. 
delta j equals 0 display style delta j equals 0 between the initial and final states of the nucleus assuming an allowed transition in the non-relativistic limit, the nuclear part of the operator for a Fermi transition is given by O F equals G B a tau carrot a plus or minus Display style math call O underscore F equals G underscore V sum underscore a hat tau underscore a PM with G V Display style G underscore V The weak vector coupling constant Tau plus or minus Display style tau underscore pm. The isospin raising and lowering operators and a display style of running over all protons and neutrons in the nucleus. Gamma-Teller transitions. A gamma-teller transition is a beta decay in which the spins of the emitted electron positron and antineutrino neutrino couple to total spin S equals 1 display style S equals 1 leading to an angular momentum change delta J equals 0 plus or minus 1 display style delta j equals 0 pm1 between the initial and final states of the nucleus assuming an allowed transition in this case the nuclear part of the operator is given by o G T equals G A of Sigma carrot a tau carrot of plus or minus Display style math call O underscore G T equals G underscore a sum underscore a hat sigma underscore a hat tau underscore a PM with G A display style G underscore a the weak axial vector coupling constant and sigma display style sigma the spin pauli matrices which can produce a spin flip in the decaying nucleon forbidden transitions when l greater than 0 the decay is referred to as forbidden nuclear selection rules require high l values to be accompanied by changes in nuclear spin j and parity pi the selection rules for the 50th forbidden transitions are delta j equals l minus 1 l l plus 1 delta Pi equals minus one L 
Display style delta j equals l1 l l plus 1 delta pi equals minus 1 caret l, where dp equals 1 or minus 1 corresponds to no parity change or parity change, respectively. The special case of a transition between isobaric analog states, where the structure of the final state is very similar to the structure of the initial state, is referred to as superallowed for beta decay, and proceeds very quickly. The following table lists the delta J and dP values for the first few values of L. Rare decay modes Bound state beta minus decay a very small minority of free neutron decays about 4 per million are so called two body decays in which the proton electron and antineutrino are produced but the electron fails to gain the 13.6 electron volts energy necessary to escape the proton and therefore simply remains bound to it as a neutral hydrogen atom in this type of beta decay in essence all of the neutron decay energy is carried off by the antineutrino for fully ionized atoms, bare nuclei, it is possible in likewise manner for electrons to fail to escape the atom, and to be emitted from the nucleus into low-lying atomic bound states orbitals. This cannot occur for neutral atoms with low-lying bound states which are already filled by electrons. Bound state beta decays were predicted by Dowdell, Jean, and LeCoin in 1947, and the phenomenon in fully ionized atoms was first observed for 163 di 66 plus in 1992 by Young et al. of the Darmstadt Heavy Ion Research Group. Although neutral 163 di is a stable isotope, the fully ionized 163 di 66 plus undergoes beta decay into the K and L shells with a half life of 47 days. Another possibility is that a fully ionized atom undergoes greatly accelerated beta decay, as observed for 187 Re by Bosch et al., also at Darmstadt. Neutral 187 Re does undergo beta decay with a half-life of 42 times 109 years, but for fully ionized 187 Re 75 plus this is shortened by a factor of 109 to only 32.9 years. For comparison the variation of decay rates of other nuclear processes due to chemical environment is less than 1%. Double beta decay some nuclei can undergo double beta decay, BB decay, where the charge of the nucleus changes by two units. Double beta decay is difficult to study, as the process has an extremely long half-life. In nuclei for which both beta decay and BB decay are possible, the rarer BB decay process is effectively impossible to observe. However, in nuclei where beta decay is forbidden but BB decay is allowed, the process can be seen and a half-life measured. Thus, BB decay is usually studied only for beta-stable nuclei. Like single beta decay, double beta decay does not change A, thus, at least one of the nuclides with some given A has to be stable with regard to both single and double beta decay. Ordinary double beta decay results in the emission of two electrons and two antineutrinos. If neutrinos are Majorana particles, i.e., they are their own antiparticles, then a decay known as neutrinoless double beta decay will occur. Most neutrino physicists believe that neutrinoless double beta decay has never been observed. See also Neutrino Beta voltaics Particle radiation Radionuclide Tritium illumination, a form of fluorescent lighting powered by beta decay Pandemonium effect Total absorption spectroscopy References Bibliography Tomonaga, S.I., 1997. The Story of Spin. University of Chicago Press. Tooley, J.K., 2011. Nuclear Wallet Cards, PDF, 8th ed. Brookhaven National Laboratory. External links The Live Chart of Nuclides, IAEA with Filter on Decay Type